Today, I'm going to talk about bubbles, but first some background. It's no secret that our dependence on fossil fuels is unsustainable, and sooner or later we will run short on energy. One possible solution would be nuclear fusion, which could produce practically unlimited amounts of energy from seawater. But nuclear fusion is really hard to do, and we're nowhere close yet. There are a couple of ways it might be done. One is called inertial confinement. To ignite the fusion reaction, the fuel must be compressed to incredible pressure and temperature, or energy density. There's no solid material that can withstand these pressures, so this must be done by focusing energy in space and time. To illustrate energy focusing, consider a hammer. When you swing a hammer, you give it energy by pushing with the entire palm of your hand for a relatively long period of time. But on impact, that energy is transferred to the tiny tip of a nail in a short instant. That focusing of energy in both space and time is what generates the huge force that drives the nail into the wood. Now imagine a million hammers, all aimed at the same point in space from a million directions at once. That would be something. And that brings us back to bubbles. Consider a lowly bubble, like one in your soda. It's basically a spherical void in a liquid with not much inside. Now imagine that you can suddenly raise the pressure in the liquid, and push on the wall of that bubble, causing it to collapse. You push on the bubble for a long time while it's large, giving it lots of energy. But as the collapse proceeds, the bubble gets smaller and smaller and carries the energy you've given it to a tiny pinprick in space, where it eventually the collapse has to come to a halt. Bang, like a million hammers converging at once. And that generates incredible pressure. People have studied this type of collapse for a long time and found that a bubble the diameter of a human hair can collapse to produce a point of light, which turns out to be a plasma at tens of thousands of atmospheres of pressure and hotter than the surface of the sun. That's amazing, but it's nowhere close to fusion. And such tiny bubbles are difficult to see, so it's tough to know for sure exactly what's going on. Up until now, it's been impossible to produce larger bubbles or drive them with more energy without them going lopsided and falling apart. What I have done in my work is found a way to generate a much larger bubble, the diameter of a BB, and to drive it to symmetric collapse with a million times more energy. Because this event is so much larger, I'm actually able to film it. And that movie shows the bubble wall accelerating to 16,000 miles per hour during the collapse. When it converges at the center, it produces a plasma at over 3 million atmospheres of pressure and more than double the temperature of the sun's surface. The pressure is so great that water is compressed to three times its normal liquid density, which is remarkable since we normally think of water as an incompressible substance. These are mind-blowing numbers, but it happens in a simple device that you can hold in your hand. To be clear, this is still nowhere close to fusion, which would require pressures in the billions of atmospheres. That's billion with a B. But at three million, we're getting into a regime that's really interesting. And doing so in a simple tabletop device is unprecedented. So what really interests me is using this type of event to study the properties of materials at these extreme conditions. That information would be valuable to designers of more exotic approaches to inertial confinement fusion, as well as to scientists studying the fundamental physics of planets and stars. And of course, I do have ideas for scaling bubble collapse to much greater pressures. I don't know where the limit is, but I think it's worth trying to find out. Thank you.